Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm Ksenia, co-founder and CEO of Sly, where our purpose is to empower wildfire resilience. So how does one get involved with the wildfire mitigation space and what is becoming known as fire tech? For me personally, immediately before founding Sly, I spent 10 years at BlackRock, world's largest asset manager, well-recognized leader in decarbonization finance. For a significant part of my career, I engaged in conversations with some of the most sophisticated institutional investors globally about the role of private capital and private enterprise in driving meaningful impact on climate change. Then, unfortunately, in the middle of 2020, we had a large fire on our family's agricultural land. What started as a benign spark during routine land maintenance activities got picked up by an unusually strong wind and obliterated the entire landscape in front of us, including dozens of olive trees and citrus trees. This personally tragic experience was in a way an inspiration for us to develop a technology tool to protect and monitor our land. And it was a couple of years later that we realized that this solution can be scaled to address several critical gaps in detecting wildfires and optimizing, optimizing response. But we'll come back to this later. For now, let's look at the huge and complex problem of wildfires. Here's a couple of numbers. Uh, each year, it's about 23 million acres that gets devastated by wildfires. This is approximately the size of England. Slightly lesser known fact or lesser talked about fact is that wildfires are also one of the top contributors to CO2 emissions among all industrial activities. As a matter of fact, there is a troubling connection between climate change and wildfires. As seasons become drier um, and hotter, there is more wildfires, they're becoming more frequent, more devastating, in turn releasing additional CO2, which is further exacerbating climate change. This last point is further supported by the numbers here. As a matter of fact, um, over the last or eight out of 10 largest megafires ever occurred in the last decade. So what can humanity do to defuse this ticking time bomb of wildfires? I classify available solutions in three building blocks, resilient communities, land stewardship, and innovative technologies. So under community resilience, we talk about uh, use of wildfire-proof building materials. We talk about vegetation management. We talk about fire corridors. Under land stewardship, uh, we talk about uh, vegetation management and the need for prescribed burns. Unfortunately, society's focus on suppression over the last couple of decades has led to significant vegetation overgrowth. In reality, however, fires have always been part of the natural ecosystem cycle, and it is in fact better, safer, and healthier to allow those low-intensity fires to occur. And finally, innovative technologies is almost by definition a little bit more controversial. What I found remar remarkable is that uh, the problem of wildfires has attracted attention of the esteemed X price challenge. Thinking back to the early 2000s, uh, the challenge uh, of X, X price foundation was directed towards solving for commercial space travel. Outcome of this challenge was in many ways the foundation of companies such as SpaceX and Virgin Galactic. This year, XPRIZE uh, newly announced and destructive wildfires challenge invited teams from ac uh, across the globe to compete in one or both of two tracks, first being ultra-fast detection and second being ultra-fast response or mitigation. And this approach across two tracks makes a ton of sense because as you look at statistics behind wildfires, we find out that it is in fact just 1% of all fires globally that contributes to more than 50% of all destruction, all devastation. So stated differently, the purpose of the X Prize challenge is to be able to detect all fires very quickly, but then also drive ample response resources to those most dangerous fires and contain them before they spread. The the underlying thread across both of these um, tracks of XPRIZE challenge is speed, which is paramount. If you think about the most um, high-risk wildfire days that are characterized by hot, dry, and windy conditions, if we can't get fire response resources to the site of fire very quickly, containment becomes almost unlikely. 
Response, generally speaking, is a fairly well understood, is visible part of the wildfire management cycle. However, what enables response um, to be effective, the first step, uh, the step that ties everything together is, in fact, detection. For detection to be impactful, for detection to be effective, it has to be done quickly, it has to work in all conditions, and it has to work across all sites. Imagine having a digital nervous system that covers all of the high wildfire risk areas, that detects and senses everything very quickly and communicates those insights in real time. In addition to communicating those high, highly granular data points in real time, the system also augments those data points with predictive insights around probability of spread of each and every fire that it detects. And this is our reality today. With technology and research, we are, in fact, able to cover vast and remote areas and detect all fires and predict those most dangerous 1% that are most likely to spread. How is this done? Uh, well, there is a couple of technologies that are already deployed in the field, such as satellite-based imagery, which is terrific at showing the damage of wildfires after they occurred. It's a little bit more challenged in the field of early detection. Cameras, on the other side, are excellent at detecting fires very quickly, but they have challenge in terms of scalability, particularly around cost and connectivity issues. At SLY, and this is the third image here, and thanks to advancements in the fields of edge AI, microcomputing, and satellite communication, we're pushing the boundary by being able to cover vast and remote areas uh, with our on-the-ground sensing technology and ensure that those deployments are done at economical points. So, in summary, being able to detect all fires very quickly and everywhere enables us to differentiate between good fires and bad fires, high-intensity fires and low-intensity fires. Reality is that we need more low-intensity fires to rejuvenate our forests. At the same time, we also need to know which of those high-intensity fires are likely to spread and contain them in time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.